Mike is getting into it first in the mouth. He said, I popped a cherry. I wasn't sure what that meant exactly. And so he came up, mouth so wet, wondering where did that juice come from? Where did those juices come from? The, you got it, Paul. You got it, you got it, you got it. Wondering where did those juices come from? Wondering where did those used to come from? He then raised his chin up to me and told me to open my mouth. Now I'm tasting a new nectar, a nectar I've never tasted before. He said, you ever had fruit punch? As our, mi as our juices and our fruit mix, and as our juices and our fruit mixtures collided together, an explosion happened. An explosion with he as a waterfall. Watermel watermelons.
not able to hold my soul back. My kitty looks squirt. <laughs> Come, kitty kitty. I need you to hold me. You spin me once again, like a beautiful ballerina. Lift and catch me there. You squat, I ride, straddling you wide. So deep inside, gripping my ass and thighs. <laughs> Come, kitty kitty. <laughs> Come, kitty kitty. <laughs> It's hard to lose after that one. Like literally. Come on. We need to know the mic stand. <laughs> Oh, up next, we got Z. <laughs> Give it up for Z. I love signing people up when they don't. Fucking hilarious. But she was ready, though. You know what I'm saying? Give it up for Temple. Little do y'all know, yo, we had a rapper versus poet battle. Temple did that, that, that poem. She got the highest reading out of everybody. She won the whole thing for us. So I'm a, That's when I was ready and I was able to perform it. You I just did it. You mind. just did that. No, I was ready. Wait, ready. Stay ready. Stay ready. You ain't never got to get ready. So um, at this point, it's my third time on stage, so I'm just doing shit that I like to do. So I'm going to do uh, one of my favorite poems I ever wrote in my life because it's from a real situation that happened. And um, the, the situation happened, I ran in the bathroom and I ran and wrote the poem, so here we go. When I see her, when I see her, anxiety always seems to win. Because as soon as she flutters in, the butterflies start. Actually, they feel more like fireflies in my stomach, birthing a phoenix in my chest, hands, hands trembling like why am I getting so much feedback? Ooh. I'm gonna start on. When I see her, when I see her, anxiety always seems to win. Because as soon as she flutters in, the butterflies start. Actually, they feel more like fireflies in my stomach, birthing a phoenix in my chest, hands trembling like fault lines. But the fault lies in my inability to shake confidence in myself, so I quake under the weight of my own self-doubt. Mind leapfrogging from planning my opening sentence to excuse after excuse as to why I shouldn't even talk to her at all because the words would just get tangled between my lips and my insecurities. And the more I think about it, the more I talk myself out of it. Like, like yeah, her ring finger is bare, but what if her heart bears the name of a lover that she just left home today? Or every other day that I see her. What if the gazes that we share is just her gauging how much of a creep I am for continuously looking in her direction, but I continue to look in the direction of our future? The temptations play on the radio as she walks to my car on our first date, me thinking out of all the fellas in the world, her attention belongs to me. Thinking how on our first anniversary we would come back to the same spot and role play, how I nervously fumbled and rummaged through my backpack of blushing cheeks, pushing aside an assortment of awkwardness, didn't pass previous receipts of rejection to finally find the fortitude to say, Hey, thinking who would get the bathroom first in the morning when we move into our first shared space. Thinking how I will open the dopest deepest dungeon to lock away our deep conversations and guard them with the fire of a with the fury of a fire breathing dragon without letting even one of her steamy secrets leave my lips how I will stimulate her already elevated mind with the chemistry and electricity to rival that of Frankenstein reanimating her ability to rise up against all the traumatic bosses that cease to eat away and her self-assurance and the only thing that I need to do is introduce myself but I can't and I don't. 
and as anxiety wrestles my confidence to the ground yet again, I'm reminded of all the times in high school when I was too shy to talk to cute girls until I got back to my place and was able to hide uh, messages on my space. And she was out of my life completely unaware of the prayers that I have sent up as dares to any benevolent being to prove their existence to me by blessing me with her presence so I can exalt her as God as I am left standing here, hiding behind my shame. Tail tucked between hind legs like a scraggly dog because my courage was too cowardly to bark. I wallow in missed opportunity seeds that grow into regret trees that blocks the sunlight that illuminates my pathway out of loneliness. Maybe one day she will take it upon herself to dive past gender roles and see past this shell to find a pearl that she can craft into a beautiful heirloom. Maybe one day these gender roles will roll to the back of my mind along with the idea that my minute ability to make shift meaningful conversations makes me a minuscule man. Maybe I will go back and craft my bulletproof battle plan to capture her intrigue use it to conquer this queen that rules the realm of my undivided attention, but the biggest part of me wishes that I never see her again. So although the battle will rage loudly inside my internal war zone, my lips ultimately stay silent, and anxiety remains undefeated. I got a short one. This one, uh, anybody in here watch uh, poetry on YouTube? Yeah. I watch it all the fucking time. And so I wrote this. So if you watch poetry on YouTube, you'll get some of these bars that I dropped. <clears throat> My vegan friends say that you are what you eat. My gang told me say that you are where you from, but as poets, we claim that you are what you write, so write on. It don't matter what you have to write on, even if it's toilet paper, just let that shit out. We all need, we all begin by grabbing our pens and trying to fit in, but I challenge you to click that bit, give it legs and make it stand out, be outstanding. Yes, we all need motivation, so we pop other poets' poems like prescriptions as a right aid. But I say, button up that YouTube diet of trying to find slams to pick at to write about now. Brush chip off your shoulders from trying to prove to the world that you are right about everything. Because we don't write to be right. We write to write wrongs. Keep old poems in the deepest reaches of our phones so we can scroll back down and call ourselves on our own bullshit. Oh! And me, I write to inspire. Inspire my people to aspire to keep their heads high like they're at admire and aspire, but still gas up my pencil to immortalize black bodies that can never go back to being unleaded. They tell me don't write so much black anger, but it's black fist and power do too much of your dirty intentions for you to shower me and your white guilt. I am black anger and black triumph. A black poet, so every pen I pick up turns into black ink, and I'm hyped now. I'm hyped now. I'm hyped now, but what in more of a rush, so right now I'm gonna climb out rush more to write poems on the foreheads of the forefathers just to rub it in they face how we got rights now. So write on, write big, write bold, like cat box, ain't got shit on your soul, cause these pages be poltergeists hovering here to haunt this realm long after they place our bodies on the shelf, so write your soul, Richard Sonnets, your rapture proof rhyme. I'm Joe, heaven shattering haikus, cause you are what you write. You are what you write. You are what you write. So who the fuck are you? Oh, Z from Baltimore. Z brings up a good point. Uh, you can watch a lot of great poetry on YouTube. Uh, there's a lot of great poets out there. Some of the poets that you've seen tonight, you can watch them on YouTube. Uh, personally, I like to watch my poetry on Pornhub. Okay, right. Well, what what happens is that I turn off the volume on Pornhub and then I just listen to poetry. Well, that's that's just because I need I need to muffle some sounds. No, is that a good. You want to know about people? You tell them this fact. Tell them, yo, did you know that home or uh, po Pornhub has theme music? It does. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, some people don't know that because they have roommates. And so <laughs> they got to hit the mute button. Dude, so now you know Z's got roommates. <laughs> you know, Temple does not. There's a, there's a little drum hook that happens before, before the porn, 
home Pornhub videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you guys need to go turn on your Pornhub and turn that volume off real quick right after the drum line. <laughs> All right, yeah. The more you know. <laughs> All right, we got R coming up next. Go on. Thank you. Hi guys, this is number three again, huh? This is fucking awesome. I'm getting more comfortable on stage, sharing my poetry with all of you. I think you guys have been enjoying it, so I'll continue. That was a flow. All right, this first, per this first poem is for um, Barry. What's his name again? Chris Barry? Mushroom, your boyfriend? It's a, it's a short poem. I am a special asshole. That's it, that's literally all he wrote. I asked him to write, write a poem and he wrote, I am special, but he's an asshole, so. I, I kind of adjusted it. <laughs> all right, here's, <laughs> this is stupid. This one I just wrote earlier today. Um, yeah, I don't have a title or anything, I just have it. I wrote this with haste, not trying to disgrace, but embrace the reality of death and dying. The reasons some of you keep trying, and why to myself I continue lying. This awesoming maze we run amazes me, inspires me to re-innovate my love for thee. My family, the Aina, the child ready to find a out of the box reality and get into the pot. I've become lost. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm sure you'll like this next one. I don't usually like to use the word nigga or nigger or niggas or any any derivative, but yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of. Going in, going in. Because I never consider myself a nigga, that's the point. You know, like if you consider yourself you a nigga, then there's certain connotations that fall in, and I never considered myself that until my life mattered. And I'm like, hell yeah, niggas' lives matter. Sorry, I'm doing half comedy. Fuck. Fuck, Fuck it up. All right, just run it. Yo, niggas saying shit without any meaning. Niggas faking it, not even truly living. Giving away rights like it was fucking Thanksgiving. Straight missing, set tripping, base hitting. I ain't kidding. Fucking shut up and listen. Not to you guys, those are to the... Okay, I didn't think of it. Cause I'm with the knowledge that's missing. I've got some things now I have to ask cause the pursuant of moment demands this task. We're gonna start with the five W's first. Who are you? What do you plan to do? When will you get through? Why are your goals even worthy of telling those around you? When do you take the first step and leave the rest? Feel blessed to have a test. This mess is exhausting. It's beyond confusing. I can't even enjoy superficial, simple musings like Netflixing, YouTubing, scrolling as I'm fucking news feeding, my brain with so much pain, the brain is actually healing. I'm needing, in fact, pleading. Understand the reasons. Please keep believing. You know the key's in once you turn it. Right there, we can both start seeing the changes we both seeking, solutions to all our grievance. How can you sit with knowledge and watch, watching the system scroll over you? Click! Stop watching me and look into yourself. The joy is innate, never fades. It's your wealth. Thank you. That was real hot, everybody. We got Martina up next. Oh! And then, I am, I am. Yo, 
your old nasty ass. Got him, coach. I got a burp. Um, so. Put that shit out. Put that shit out. It didn't come out. It didn't come out. It might come out during the poem. I don't know. <laughs> That'll be funny. Okay, so I am going to recite a poem called The Run On. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Broken. So self absorbed in my own thoughts, in my own thoughts, I soak in. I'm sick to my stomach, my illness, it has me croaking. Words that I can't quite seem to bring up to utter, yet somehow I'm choking. I'm holding on my last string, I'll name that patience. I'm waiting for motivation to creep back in. I'm lacking, I've slacked off, I'm mentally whacked off, desensitized to reality, so I stand off. I'm Standoff-ish, my mental stability is out of tune. Like early spring, I've sprung into depression and I have bloomed into this weak flower. Negative thoughts, I wish I can devour, but I've been devoured. I am the coward for letting this darkness overtake me and depression overpower all that I am. I'm sinking like quicksand. My thoughts have the upper hand, so I've been reprimanded. Did I tell you that I'm a prisoner in my own mind? I pass time with my thoughts being bitter as lime. I wish I could stop it. Wish I wasn't my worst critic. Is a pivot shift between emotion up and down, rolling coasting. Why is darkness so potent? That I wish I knew. I wish instead of seeing black, I seen blue skies, yellow beams of sun rays, clear skies. But yet, oh, sorry. <laughs> um. I wish instead of seeing black eyes, seeing blue skies, yellow beams of sun rays, clear skies, happy days instead, but now with days that's dead, it's gray skies and a foggy haze, and most days I dread it is like a constant fight, I'm constantly losing, forever choosing between living for tomorrow or never waking up from snoozing, I'm in this battle, coasting the ocean, the boat with no paddle, just stuck. And if I believe in my next phrase, I say, just my luck that I don't drown in my sorrow. Let me drown in my sorrow. Zero cares for tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like this. I really am. It's just that I don't give a damn itch. Damn itch. I'm damaged. I've tried talking therapy. I've even tried to bandage. But some things that are broken just can't be fixed. Um, Broken, broken, wish that I could break out of this depression, but I'm too broken into self-absorbed in my own thoughts, and my own thoughts are soaking. I'm sick to my stomach, my illness that has me croaking, words that I can't quite seem to bring up to utter, yet somehow I'm choking, I'm holding on my last string, I'll name that patience, I'm waiting for motivation to creep back in, I'm lacking, I'll slack, slack off, I'm mentally whacked off, Desensitized to reality, so I uh, stand off. Um, stand off ish. I'm um, broken. That's it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
scared of failing you because you believe in me right now. And I know what hope looks like when it leaves the eyes and pops the shot in the dark. And I know, I know I'm supposed to show you all of my scars, but the truth is most of them pretty bad. And I don't want you to see that part. You might forget how pretty I are. Yeah. How upright I talk. And I know, I know I'm supposed to give you all of my heart, but the truth is I gave you all the pieces I could find so far. But still mine so far is when I'm bartering the things I'm offering for just a smile of return. Show me yours, I'll show you mine. I swear to God I won't say a word. I know what you've done to get here. I see your dirty armor and your bloody clothes and your tired shoes. Nothing shiny, but precious. Thank you We got one more left. Lutia? Yes. Yeah. All right. Give a round of applause. In the end, all the things your money bought won't mean much. Did you interact with kindness, improve the lives you touched? Did you inspire people to connect with their rich essence? Did you, uh, oh, let me start over again. Listen. Look, I'm a comedian, and I, this was poetry night, and then I was like, I'm gonna get all my stuff out my old bag of poetry. Okay, wait. Let's come back to purpose. <laughs> We're gonna go with, um, this one deals with child abuse. Uh, your child is my child, and my child is your child. The news reports another mother arrested for the slaughter of her infant daughter. Her body scar filled, stuffed and soiled sheets under a motel bed smothered in red as a heart bled from the maid who discovered her. Remains stiff and cold were only four weeks old, 48 weeks from hearing happy birthday for the very first time, killed by a mother who lost her heart, soul, and mind. Another man is placed under arrest for causing the death of his girlfriend's son left in his care. As the toddler slept, the coward crept, dousing the bed with gasoline, he set the child ablaze. Pleasant dreams became a hellish scene as flames engulfed the toddler's screams and consumed him hungrily. The child could not be saved, sent to an untimely grave by a man enraged because the mother broke a promise she made. Death without humanity, cycles of insanity. Death without humanity, cycles of insanity. It breaks my heart. But I can't hear the sounds of my breaking heart over the sounds of the broken bones and battered spirits and shattered lives, carrying battle scars, hurting those who survive. Sometimes I find myself crying without knowing why because I am feeling the pain of someone else who is yet another extension of myself and we know the reasons why. Children die because some women put more thought into picking fruit than the men they expose to their precious youth. They give their children's lives away for brief encounters of sexual play. It angers me that a mother could place the pleasure of a passionate side before the desperate pleas and the needs of her own child's cries. And while she gets rocked, the child slowly dies, and we have the nerve to call ourselves civilized? What's the solution? Do your share for the revolution. Stand up for our kids. That's what they need us to do. You look out for your kids, my kids, and I'll do the same for you. When children cry, respond with all due diligence. Look for signs of abuse. Use intelligence. Put abusers on notice. Let them hear our angry roars. Let them know they can't escape from the reach of our claws. Reduce crimes against children with harsh child protection laws. Because how can I stay silent as one child complains of hunger and abuse and withers in pain? And I cry for all that child could have been, all that life force stamped out in a moment of sin. And although that might be what some call fate, I mourn for the loss of potential so great. And as long as one poor defenseless child is left to cry, there should be no dry eyes. As long as one child dies from neglect, tears will remain in my eyes and I will respond to that child's cries. I'll be the voice for my silent allies. Because your child is my child, and my child is your child. And together, we can protect our youth, y'all. I'm Tia, I just want to say, 
Um, I am so I'm here for the month of August, oh, July, for the month of July, and I'm from New York, and I'm just really happy to meet my com. I met my comedy family last year. Now I'm meeting my poetry family in Hawaii. Thank you. We got you. And for my next act, I didn't even drink. Guys. Thank you. You're good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this evening's happy hour open mic poetry. We'd like to thank you all for coming out. We really appreciate it. We recorded this. If you'd like to see yourself, it's going to be on Paco Local Hawaii, and it's just an open mic thing where we, so you can watch yourself. I try to get famous off that shit, but I only got like 10 followers, so it's all comedians and shit, so fuck it. I'm going to start showing my ass. <laughs> But we got open mic comedy. It's going to start up on Friday. Oh, not start up. We do it every Friday. It's like a block party. We got open mic on Saturdays, too. Saturday is going to be the special event. We got a 10-year-old hosting. And it's called the Clean Comedy Challenge. Because a lot of y'all got potty mouths and don't know how to talk in front of adults or kids or families. So we're going to challenge everybody to do clean comedy. Talk about kids stuff and the try to keep it for TV and family. Do your thing on Saturday, huh? Or you can use a fruit anytime you think of a bad word. Yeah, that's what I was telling people. Just substitute the cuss word. <laughs> Just say funk or, or filth. Banana you. Banana. You know what I like saying? Cream pies. That's my thing, but cream pies. I love cream pies. You can't cream pie everybody though. Just oh, just oh. No, what cream pies is? No, you know that's the thing. They know about cream pies. I love cream pies. Out there, delicious. Yeah, they are. Yeah, awesome. It's fucking all. It's the best thing in the world, yo. The best thing. It's up there, right? Right there. Got a little cream pies, y'all. Do a cream pie next time. Let's you see. <laughs> Cream pies lead to plan B. My name Paco Loco, yo. My name Paco Loco. But we'd like to uh, give a warm shout out to Darren hosting for tonight. Yeah. We appreciate y'all, Darren Canberra. I'd like to give a shout out to King's Pizza. Yeah. Mushroom. Mushroom, if you can, please support her Feed the Homeless program so Rohan can get something to eat, please. Uh, <laughs> Once again, I'd just like to thank you. Please have a safe ride home. Have a good night. Aloha. Bye.